Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Jesse Leons. This edition's top stories. NEMAC announces amendments to COVID-19 measures. The Forestier and Bagatelle land stabilization project to be completed soon. And the Quayol language takes center stage in the annual UNESCO competition. A reduction in COVID-19 cases has led to several amendments to protocols by the National Emergency Management Advisory Council. In an update to the nation on the pandemic response, officials announced new decisions and protocols to take effect December 15th through to January 11th, focused around a subtle reduction in restrictions. These include special permissions for Christmas and social gatherings, dine-in permissions at restaurants and bars, and extended hours for business operations and commercial activities now up to 11 p.m. from the previous 9 p.m. Banks, credit unions and other services are encouraged to increase working hours and teller numbers where possible to reduce excessive lines while ensuring protocol adoption during the holiday season. Slaughterhouses and butchers can remain open and employers are also encouraged to institute shopping days in order to reduce long lines and Christmas shopping rush. Restaurants and bars will also be allowed to operate up until 11 p.m. and patrons will then be permitted to dine in at these establishments. Social gatherings for the holiday season are restricted to 25 individuals. However, authorities strongly discourage parties. No allowances have been given for mass gatherings or social events of any kind or loud music permits for the four-week period. Religious institutions will also be permitted to carry out services according to the square footage of their houses of worship, and the maximum number of religious rites attendees has been increased for this period. Non-contact sports will now be permitted, gyms as well, and reduced COVID-19 restrictions are guided by a decrease in cases recently. Health officials advise continued adherence to the protocols and infection prevention measures to maintain the gains made going into the new year. The government of St. Lucia continues to undertake measures to reduce the island's physical vulnerability to weather events. Among several ongoing projects is the Forestier and Bagatelle Land Stabilization Project embarked upon in the aftermath of Hurricane Tomas. From about 11 a.m. on the 30th of October 2010, St. Lucia began to take a beating from the relentless winds and heavy rains of Hurricane Tomas. By the time the skies cleared, 14 people perished and the country was set back hundreds of millions of dollars in infrastructural damage. Rebuilding has been a slow, expensive and daunting task, but with the help of international agencies like the World Bank Group, roads, bridges and buildings which were scarred by Thomas are slowly being rehabilitated. Lester Arnold is the consultant engineer. This area here was one of numerous slides around the island that affected the infrastructure, the road infrastructure of St. Lucia. And since then, the funding has been made available through the DVRP, which is the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Program, to rebuild this wall, considering that this road is one of the critical links or part of the secondary road systems of, of St. Lucia. One of the critical components of the DVRP is to maintain critical link linkages between communities, especially in times of disasters. And this road here, like I indicated, is a very critical link between the Mon Forest here and, and Bagatelle going into to, to Castries. The contract for the rehabilitation works in Bagatelle and Forestier was awarded to Fresh Start Construction Company through a competitive bidding process in the tune of $2 million EC dollars. The official contract was signed on November 27th. By the 4th of December, construction was well underway. Sheldon Harris is the construction superintendent at Fresh Start Construction. What we're constructing here is actually a reinforced concrete cantilevered retaining wall. First of all, we start with the excavation. We're trying to achieve a suitable bearing strata for that wall. Um, it's been exposed there for a while, so there's a bit of water beneath the soil. But hopefully we should get a proper bearing for that. After which we will blind, followed by reinforcement for the footing, formwork, and we'll be pouring concrete to cast that footing today. The particular type of wall that's been put there will be a 16-inch thick retaining wall been designed specifically 
for that type of stabilization. Once fully cast, the forms will be removed. The site will be backfilled and compacted. This will then allow contractors to lay a surface of asphalt on this repaired at land slippage site. Naturally, this undertaking has its own challenges. Traffic for one. Uh, we've been managing the traffic, but everyone's the ones who come through here. People are ignoring the signs. We've run it through the media. We've put up all proper signage, but people still want to come through. But we have to send them back for health and safety reasons. We can't allow them to pass. Similarly, a land slippage in forest here, which has been left unattended for over 10 years, is now simultaneously under construction. Forest here project is more or less similar to this. So what we're doing there, we're first erecting a reinforced concrete wall, followed by a, a concrete road on top of there, and it will have concrete drains. That should take care of the water issue that caused the landslide in the first place. After Hurricane Thomas in 2010, the Jenner Road collapsed, Bacatel was blocked off and impassable. The landslides between Genu and Forestier meant that residents of Forestier were marooned for days before the landslides were cleared. So under the DVRP, which is the one of the main focuses to build resilience against um, natural disasters, this project here is critical in the sense that it will maintain the linkages of communities for the movement of goods and services in the event of any other disaster. The Forest Day and Bacatel land stabilization project is expected to be concluded within the next two weeks. When completed, these projects would have fulfilled the first component of the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project, which is to reduce physical vulnerability and to pilot adaptive measures to build resilience to current and future hydrometeorological shocks. From the Government Information Service, Humadi Mark reporting. Meantime, the national thrust towards resilience building and development has received a shot in the arm with funding for the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project from the World Bank Group. We have more in this report from Rajvara Lawrence. The Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project for St. Lucia aims to reduce urgent disaster crises and increase long-term climate resilience in St. Lucia by addressing a multiplicity of risks associated with climate change and its impacts. The project consists of several components, one being risk reduction and adaptation measures. This component would support structural and non-structural flood and landslide risk reduction interventions and climate adaptation measures to improve St. Lucia's resilience against current and future climate shocks. Another critical element is the emergency response and recovery to carry out reconstruction projects which may arise with varied climate change meteorological variations. On Friday 27th November, three contracts were awarded in fulfillment of the DVRP's mandate. Construction of the Bexon Community Center or indoor facility for a better term. And that contract which went through the competitive bidding process was won by Jim Cobb Construction at the price of $9,068,963.21. Um, the second contract that will be awarded is for the land rehabilitation and roadworks in Bacatel and Forest here. We had some landslides in these areas going back to Hurricane Thomas in 2010. And you would see that these areas have not been addressed. Um, it also went through the competitive bidding process and the contract was won. The award was won by Fresh Start Construction at the price of $2,475,121.78. And the third set of projects that would be implemented during this phase is the Denry South Drainage Project. And that is part of the also flood mitigation works within the Denry South community. The construction was awarded to Triple L Construction at a cost of approximately $3 million EC dollars. 
The drainage works in Denry South is intended to be completed by June of 2021, the construction of the Bexar Community Centre by December of 2021, and the land stabilisation and road rehabilitation in Bacatel and Forestier is intended to be completed by November of 2021. The World Bank Group came to the assistance of St. Lucia post-Hurricane Thomas and the December 13th trough with the aim of rehabilitating damaged infrastructure and preparing the island for varied weather impacts. To date, 74 million US dollars have been secured from the World Bank through the DVRP for execution of these projects. We want to place on record our appreciation for the level of commitment that we have seen at the level of the World Bank and the team that works along with us in St. Lucia because without the, the support of the World Bank team, these projects would not have been possible. The rehabilitation of the Victor Archer Building, the construction of the Denry Wellness Center, the smart block at the Miku Secondary School, and extensive flood mitigation works are just a few initiatives undertaken through the DVRP. From the Government Information Service, Rajvaro Lawrence reporting. The Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labour, meanwhile, is informing residents of La Retrette of scheduled paving works from Thursday, December 10, 2020, as part of the final phase of the La Retrette Road Reconstruction Project. To facilitate paving and in an attempt to keep dust at a minimum, the La Retrette Road was closed as a bypass on Tuesday, December 8th. Residents living along the section of the road already paved must exit and access their properties using the new Larretret Bridge. Residents at the other end of Larretret will be accommodated at the Kilargo entrance. And further, all road users are advised that the Larretret Road is open exclusively for access by residents. Signs and police barricades will be erected and motorists who do not reside in the area are urged to desist from accessing this active project site. Weather permitting, paving works will be completed on the new La Retret Road by Tuesday, December 15, 2020. The Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, in collaboration with the Taiwan Technical Mission, have officially opened the newly remodeled pack house at the Inland Reception and Distribution Center in Odsa. More in this report from Anissia Antoine. The Taiwan Technical Mission has officially handed over the newly refurbished pack house to the Department of Agriculture. The pack house being managed by the St. Lucia Marketing Board creates a space for farmers to prepare produce that meets the international standards for food safety. Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, says the newly constructed facility will also allow for the enhancement of packaging as well as grading of products. What we realize that apart from the potential for expanding our market share as it pertains to bananas, there's also a call for us to look at other crops and a number of other crops and based on discussions with um, Ms. Daniel and, and her, her team, there are another other, of other crops that have potential for us to export to the UK um, but with, without the requisite facility it will be very difficult for us and that is why when the IJ came and I did, had discussion with your head of technical mission we saw it was necessary for us to construct this pack house which will provide an opportunity for us both. Ambassador of the Republic of China Taiwan to St. Lucia, His Excellency Peter Chen, says the new facility marks a milestone for the agriculture sector in St. Lucia. The completion of the packing house will be a transformational moment to emerge from the pandemic stronger. The packing house is not only a house for agricultural products, it is a house for farmers, for better life and for hope. I sincerely hope and wish this meaningful project will bring confidence to both farmers and customers, and it will further strengthen the friendship and cooperation between our two peoples. 
Parliamentary Representative for Castries Southeast, Honorable Guy Joseph, expresses gratitude to the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan, for the new opportunities provided to farmers in his constituency and the wider society. The opening of this place today, this park house, is welcome. And I think that it would be an encouragement to our farmers to continue to produce because markets are being sourced. The linkages between tourism and agriculture is strong. And while we are in the COVID environment, it gives us a good opportunity to prepare ourselves for the rebound of the market to get greater share of what is happening in this area. The newly renovated park house forms part of an initiative under the Seven Crops Project with the overall aim of reducing the food import bill. From the Information Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. This is the NTN Nightly News. Stay with us. Coronavirus? But children are safe, no? Hold up. Children are actually more likely to touch all kinds of surfaces, put their hands on their mouths and their eyes, or sneeze and cough with little thought about hygiene when around others. While children have been seen to recover well from this virus, they can easily spread it to those more at risk, like the elderly or ill persons who have a weaker immune system. Teach the little ones in your care to be little powerhouses of infection prevention. Keep reminding them, wash, wash, wash your hands. Cover your mouth with tissue or your inner elbow when you sneeze and cough. And be sure to praise them when you see them taking these precautions. Our health is in our hands. Together, through simple actions, we can stop the spread of coronavirus. This message was brought to you by the Bureau of Health Education of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Welcome back. The Tapio Hospital provides much-needed medical equipment to St. Jude Hospital, which will aid in the care of their critically ill patients. More in this report from Fresnel Neptune. The St. Jude Hospital recently received a donation of a transport ventilator from the Tapio Hospital, which is expected to support the doctors in providing better care to its critically ill patients when moving them from one location to another. Chairman of the Board of Directors of Medical Associates, Dr. Rumel Daniel, expressed the commitment of his organization to provide support to its sister organization in the south of the island. I want to thank all members of our staff because um, having the, they have worked diligently and as a result they are able to, um, we are able to uh, do this. Um, we have long recognized that some of the areas um, which are deficient um, in the Thousand Hospital, because I speak with Patrick, would be, uh, and it would fit in a significant area of a deficiency if we were to, do, to donate this. Minister for Health and Wellness, Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac says, she is extremely grateful for the generous donation of this critically needed equipment, stating it will be very beneficial to the patients at the St. Jude Hospital. This is very remarkable what we are doing here this morning. This is uh, an essential piece of equipment that Tapio Hospital is donating to St. Jude Hospital in the South. Of course, we do not have any such machine in the South. It is a transportable, portable um, ventilator, and it is going to come in extremely handy, handy right now, especially as we move from that institution in the stadium to the new St. Jude Hospital. Things will be in flux. Of course, we know things has been in flux for a long time in the South. And um, portable equipment like that, as expensive as it is, of course, plays a critical role in, in our maintenance of health care for our people in St. Lucia. Representative of the St. Jude Hospital, Dr. Patrick Joseph, expressed appreciation to the Tapio Hospital for the donation and says it is the intent to make great use of the transport ventilator. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. 
after closely monitoring and evaluating the current situation on the highly pathogenic avian influenza, the HPAI outbreaks in Europe and the UK in particular, the Veterinary and Livestock Services Division, as the sole veterinary authority, has decided to place a temporary restriction on the importation of fresh, chilled and frozen poultry meat from the UK with immediate effect. The importation of live birds and hatching eggs from the UK is also banned. Processed poultry stored in hermetically sealed or airtight containers and treated to destroy the virus can be imported once accompanied by an international veterinary health certificate attesting that it was so treated. The division continues to monitor the situation and will advise on any further developments. The annual quail competition hosted by the St. Lucian National Commission for UNESCO has concluded with strides made in furthering the use of the quail language. Herma DeMac reports. The St. Lucia National Commission for UNESCO is announcing the 2020 winners of the annual Creole Poetry Competition. The first, second and third place winners were awarded cash and prizes for their participation. Damien Rennie is the first place winner. He walked away with $1,000. Anna Zilta Tunch claimed the second place prize of $800. And in third place, Jacqueline Simon winning $500. The winner of the competition, Damien Rennie, says he's thankful for the opportunity to express himself in Creole. It was inspired by the theme, Anumete Tet Noa Sam, a theme of unity, which is something we really need in our country at this time, especially in this time of, you know, malady with the COVID-19. So it was inspired by this, by this situation we're going through. And in my poem, I, I try to rally the people of St. Lucia together to unite and to remind us that we can accomplish anything if we come together as one. The theme for this year's competition provided an opportunity for UNESCO to promote its efforts in developing linguistic variety. Marcia Simpurian, Secretary General at the National Commission for UNESCO, says the competition can be instrumental in nationalizing the Creole language. It is also an opportunity to promote UNESCO's efforts at linguistic variety through poetic expression and to offer indigenous languages the opportunity to be heard within our communities. For us, it presents an opportunity to give greater visibility to the Creole language in the public sphere and to continue to advocate for its status to be reviewed so that Creole can become either an official language, a national language, or language of instruction. The competition forms part of the observance of the International Mother Language Day. It also commemorates World Poetry Day and coincides with the celebration of St. Lucia's independence anniversary. From the Government Information Service, Hermady Mark reporting. Well, that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or our YouTube channel. I'm Jesse Leon signing off for now, but do stay tuned to NTN for more programming.